Hello everyone, thanks for watching the video. So I have this kerosene heater here that was uh, stored in our basement by some neighbors that uh, moved out of state. And uh, we're not able to come back and get some of the things that they stored. Uh, that was 20 years ago. So the heater uh, was in the, the same condition, which is a it was very, very rough condition. Um, and so um, I'm going to try to light this today. Uh, I was going to give this away. I was going to donate this last year. I uh, held off on that or didn't get around to doing it. And now with the price of um, utilities, you know, going up this winter and just across the board, everything really, I decided uh, it may be a good idea to light this and get some kerosene on hand and uh, probably use this. So uh, we're going to try to um, get it uh, lit today or tomorrow. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit and I'll show you kind of what we have. So it's by Sunbeam. We have a uh, start button here wick adjustment got a manual shut off here we have a gauge that is broken fuel gauge that is broken uh, one thing interesting about this one is the fuel tank is removable so you could actually take it out of the heater here and you could store that separately pretty good idea i think uh, we've got lighting instructions And this is made by uh, Northern Electric Company, division of Sunbeam Corporation. That's the model. It's 11,000 BTUs. So here's where the batteries would be at. We're not going to be using the batteries to start it. Uh, but if you wanted to uh, clean that up, uh, or someone did, they could probably you know, use that again for, for a starter. We have uh, the type of fuel to use, basically uh, the K1 kerosene. And just overall dirty kerosene heater. So what we'll do first is remove the grill. Should be able to just lift this up. Okay. Now we can take the wick chamber, move that away. Now I already know that the wick is not working on this so I've ordered a wick so we'll go ahead and prepare for uh, for the wick when we get it um, we'll take the rest of it apart so that when we when it does arrive we'll be able to just hopefully put it in without any trouble there's two Phillips head screws one on each side of the bottom There's a wing nut right here holding this plate in place. Uh, it's also engaged right here in the front. Let's take that off. Okay, it comes right off. So let's kind of get an idea that it actually goes underneath like that at the front. So now there's four wing nuts. I need to remove those. So 
So when we lift this up, we should be able to see the wick if there is a wick in there. There it is. So it is working, it looks like. For some reason I could not get it to move. It doesn't seem to go up very high. So to remove the wick, I'm gonna start with this little pin right here. It's like a little cotter pin. Pull that off. See how we now we can from the knob we can pull that away that gear okay I guess we need to take note of where it's at it's all the way up at the top up here so that's where we'll put it back knob just came off that's okay all right let's see if we can pull up the wick wick holder all right there we go that was easy so it has these little sharp barbs you need to be careful of these see how it lines up here tape line there's an arrow this is the old wicca hoping the new one's going to have the same line but there is a line right there so that'll be the top you can look where this starts flaring out here at the bottom it goes into the tank and it's kind of lined up at the bottom right there just in case the new one doesn't have lines that we need inside the wick holder just found out that our new wick has been delivered here's a look at it here's the uh, I don't know if there's a company name on there or not but uh, it says wick number two American wick it's got lines here A and B got uh, installation instructions uh, it says to line the top line up with the top of the wick holder so uh, just gonna open it up and start putting it into the barbs they're catching immediately so be prepared for that So I've got it upside down, but that's kind of what we're uh, trying to do. Now I'm going to just push those barbs in place all the way around so that that line is, is on the top everywhere along the wick holder. Kind of hear them snapping in place. Should have better gloves. I haven't been pricked, and I'm not sure those barbs are capable of going all the way through. But uh, 
Don't want to take any chances. Be very careful. So that's looking pretty good. So it, there's also the red stops right there at the bottom. So that's kind of easy to, to line up. But yeah, I've got the line A lined up with the wick holder at the top. So we're looking good. So the next day here, I've got an update. I went ahead and put the wick holder at the B mark. Tried to line it up there the best I could. Before we had it at the A, and I just didn't like the way it was looking there. It wasn't coming above um, the, uh, the burner here, um, or the cylinder, whatever you call, whatever it's called. Now, it was said, just like the old wick, uh, I have no idea how the old one was used. Um, so, you know, we're at B here. I think that's going to be better. I can always turn it down. I've got plenty of room to turn it down. Um, so, uh, and the instructions, it did say something about make sure that the wick protrudes a third of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Just make sure that the wick protrudes about a quarter of an inch to a third inch from wick casing. Uh, there's no real illustration of that here, but uh, yeah, the reason that we had it on A is because uh, it said to uh, insert the new wick into the wick holder, just it so that its top, top line is even with the upper edge of the wick holder, then push the wick uh, from the inside so it's flush against the wick. So that's kind of where we started from. I think this is going to be better for me, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, push the rest of the wick down into the tank and put our knob. Uh, gear back in here put our clip back on and uh, pro uh, seed from there all right here's our new position much better All right, lastly, the grill. You know what, let's put the, uh, before putting the grill on, let's take a look at our chamber. And it looks to be pretty healthy. Now we'll put the grill on. Finally the knob. And we're good. Let's try it out now. 
So just going down with our tank. I could kind of feel it drop in seat and it kind of pushed. You can hear it. That fuel, once I pushed it down, uh, it opened, uh, I guess, a valve up and lets it go into the tank. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be using a lighter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the, take the grill up. Lift the chamber, put my lighter in there. I'll be turning the wick up to the high to light it. And then I'll adjust it lower. Uh, to about a quarter of an inch. Let me show you some of the instructions. So I'll follow these instructions. Normal flame, uniform red glow, wick too high, flames above mesh. So if it gets like that, it's, it's wrong. That should be right. Uh, dark mesh on the top would be wrong. Sporadic flames, wrong. To extinguish, turn the wick adjustment knob. Counterclockwise until it stops and the flame is completely out. Wait 10 minutes to allow wick to cool before relighting. Okay, so we're gonna light it. I'm gonna try to film this. Um, so typically the chamber would be right over the burner there and we would just lift it up and put the match. You know, at the wick, have this turned up, I guess like high. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this over on the side so we can watch this. And uh, go ahead and use a match. All right, that's perfect. Okay, so that's probably too high. So we're gonna go ahead and put the chamber over it. Move it around a little bit. Starting to get some smoke. See, that's, that's probably too high, so we'll go ahead and take it down a little bit. I think it said something like a uh, third quarter of an inch. So it hasn't been started in 20 years, so it's probably going to smoke a little bit. That's what it's doing now. And uh, it works. So I'll check back in a few minutes here. Here we are now, about 40 minutes later. No more smoke. Everything seems to be doing pretty well here. Let's take a look at our flame. Before doing that, let's, let's check the temperature. Let me show you what the temperature is out here. It's not that cold. It's not hot either. It's about 61 degrees. I got it. It's like it's stabilizing around the one sixty. 164, something like that. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the flame on it. So, uh, yeah, working good. Good heat. I guess that's going to be it for uh, the Sunbeam kerosene heater. Uh, again, this was uh, manufactured by Northern Electric Company. 
thanks for watching the video. Uh, what I'll do is um, I'll turn this off in just a minute here. Uh, you know, let it cool down before I move it or restart it. Uh, but probably tomorrow I will uh, put this or start using it indoors when it gets a little bit colder. It's not quite that cold yet. But uh, yeah, I feel good that uh, it is very usable now. So uh, yeah, I guess that'll be it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good day.